Hi, I'm Jamie Monjovi with AARP Florida. Thanks for joining us today. It's Financial Literacy Month, and we welcome you to this financial discussion with AARP subject matter expert, Martin Booker. As a nonprofit, nonpartisan member organization, AARP has been working to promote the health and well being of older Americans for more than 60 years. If you've joined us before on Facebook Live, you know this is a live stream where you can post your questions in the comment section, and we'll follow up with answers for you. Today, we're featuring Martin Booker, a financial expert with AARP. Martin is a member of the AARP Financial Resilience Team, leading financial education initiatives focused on social security, budgeting, and investing. Before joining AARP, Martin worked in the nonprofit sector where he developed a passion for helping people improve their money habits. Martin, welcome, and thanks for being here today. Of course, thanks for having me, Jamie. Can you share with us why AARP focuses on financial wellness at this time of year? Yeah, you know, this is a it's it's this is a really good time of year to kind of start talking about personal finance and just and financial wellness. I mean, we're you know, we're getting close to the end of tax season. So, you know, we're all kind of managing that process and making sure that we've we've managed our um taxes from last year. Um right now, you know, there's a lot of economic uncertainty that's taking place. So we have to just prepare and make sure that we're um um, you know, that we, we we manage that well and that we have the conversations that are necessary to make sure that people understand what to do and what not to do at times like this. And then, um, you know, we're, we're also we're getting close to those graduation season and the, and the, the transition, yeah. major transition season. Right. It's like people are graduating. People are moving into their careers. There's so much stuff that starts to happen and we're preparing for it now. So we have to be ready. The summer's coming. We're going to want to take those great vacations. We're going to want to, um, you know, just just do all types of fun things. The grandchildren are coming to stay with us yeah. for the summer. There's all types of fun things that start to happen around this time of year. So we have to, you know, it's a good time to just make sure that we do that that check in. We're four months into the year. So it's a um, it's a really good time to just think about your finances and just kind of make sure that you're prepared. And uh, especially before we hit the, that major holiday season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So true. And people retiring too. Um, yeah, my mother-in-law just told us that she's retiring. And so everybody's making changes right now. Um, and so tell us a little bit about um, the AARP money map. What is that for? How is it used? Yeah, I'm happy to. So AARP money map is one of our flagship financial tools. It's a it's a, uh, an amazing tool that we've created completely free to all users. Whether you're a member of AARP or not a member of AARP, it's it's completely free. Um, and the the uh, the goal of AARP Money Map is to just guide any user through 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 multiple journeys that can address different financial situations that you may experience. So uh, one of the first modules that we created for this tool, which was a great one, it was focused on unexpected expenses. So you know you you imagine you're you're living your life, you're um, just taking care of all of your responsibilities, and then some major medical expense or some major repair happens that you have to take care of. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that people are prepared for that because that's no easy thing, right? So um, you you can manage, um, and so we'll walk you through, you know, how to cope with that, some of the steps that you can take, and some of the amazing resources that are around locally or nationally that can help you with an unexpected expense. But then we also tackle things like debt management and um, how to save for a major um, save for a major expense that you may be working on. So it's a great tool. It's very situational and it can help you out in many ways to just navigate um, many different situations that you could go through with your finances. And this is all online, right? Completely online. It's an, yeah. um, a great online resource. Yeah, that's really convenient. So a lot has been going on in the financial markets, and you mentioned the uncertainty um, early on in our discussion. In light of what happened and what we've seen kind of unravel with the Silicon Valley bank collapse and the uncertainties in the marketplace, can you share how this is going to impact banks nationwide, worldwide? What's the outlook for our economy right now? Definitely. I'm happy to talk about that. So, you know, we saw those uh, we saw those major bank uh, collapses with Silicon Valley Bank first and then we saw Signature Bank. And of course, it raised a lot of uncertainty for folks. A lot of conversations that I've had lately have um, um, been around that or there's been some type of question about, you know, what does this mean for my bank? If my bank was the one that acquired this bank, should I be concerned and should I move away from that bank? And what I'm going to say is, um, you know, just just so you know, the the reasoning for those banks, the the collapse of those banks was a bit of oh, it's one of the the um, the the major pitfalls that happen even with everyone's with with people's personal finances, which in one case is diversification. You know, so those banks they just um, they they weren't. Um, 
they they happen to be heavily in in one sector and silicon valley banks um situation it was the tech sector so you know they were in a position where the majority of their money was with startups and with tech companies and when those companies needed uh, needed their money and started to pull their money, it caused an issue for that bank. Um, so, you know, that's what kind of caused that issue. And it's the same thing that can happen with us. Right. If we were to invest all of our money in tech or all in oil or all in retail, if that sector was to have issues, then that could cause us to have a, a major um, a financial issue. So, you know, the, the great thing is that for, for individuals whose money was um, insured by the FDIC, they were completely covered in that case. The the tricky thing about this situation is a lot of those bank uh, the the customers they were above the FDIC um, um, coverage coverage amount, which is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is you know so um, which is something that you want to be careful of doing in any case. So you know um, in in a lot of cases, our major banks and our big banks they are, they are a lot more diversified. So we wouldn't you know we typically wouldn't see that with some of our larger banks and their investments are are a little more diversified. Um, the 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 way that these banks were um, <clears throat> the way that it was recovered was through some FDIC insured money and the, that money was um, uh, based on fees that was paid out through um, through other banks and through banking fees. So luckily they didn't have to tap into like our our funds to cover these things, right? So we are in a position where even though that happened, they didn't necessarily have to tax um, have to taxpayers didn't necessarily have to take the hit um, in that case. Yeah. Yeah, that's that is really interesting. Thanks for the overview. And I think that, um, you know, really what it boils down to is, is a risk management issue. And so that's true, whether you're looking at a large bank or your own personal finances, risk management is really important. And so share with us some of the ways that we can be cautious and vigilant when placing our money in a bank or an investment um, and things like that. Yeah, Jamie, that's a that's a great point. And you you kind of you 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 uh, started that off very well, just in thinking risk management. Right. One of the first things that we have to do is we do want to pay attention to things like the um, the FDIC insure insurance. Right. We, we want to make sure that if we're with a bank and you have more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars with that bank, you are putting yourself at a bigger risk. So you want to do things like moving to other bank accounts. Um, the, the good thing about the FDIC insurance is that it is per owner and it's per account right so if if you're on an account with another person then um your your account is now uh insured up to five hundred thousand dollars right so 250 per person and each account that you have with that bank is also going to be insured so you want to you know you want to take advantage of things like that moving your money and diversifying your money so that you're not in a position where um your money is is at risk so that's what on the banking side now, when it comes to the investing side, it's a little different. When we look at even what happened with these bank collapses, the people that took some of the biggest hits were some of the investors. And the reason that investors will take a big hit is because F, uh, um, money that's typically invested may not be insured in the same way. So if you are, when you're investing, you do want to make sure that you're just doing your due diligence to um, to make sure that you're, you're um aware of who you're investing with, right? So if I'm investing with a bank that is heavily invested in just one sector, then although, you know, you may see yourself gaining some some um, um, some serious uh, yields when it comes to the money that you're making, but you have to also pay attention to the risk that's gonna be associated with that investment, which is why we make sure we diversify, right? We wanna be in different markets. We wanna be thinking about different ways um, to manage our money so that we're not at risk um, in one sector, I even if that sector is is skyrocketing at the moment, we have to be careful. So, um, so you know, risk management, diversification, those are going to be some of your your strategies. And then researching, making making sure that you're aware of uh, who your money's with and and how they're um, being good stewards of your money. Absolutely, and I'm sure that working with a you know certified or licensed financial professional is a big part of that. If you're not you know talking about you know your local banker um, or credit union professional, so yeah. Um, so tell us, I'm sure you know lots of people were thinking, wow, you know my retirement, my 401k, like you know their mind started going toward like my own investments during this time. And so tell us a little bit about how those long-term investments, like IRAs and 401ks, um, are they safe from financial failure? Yeah, so those those are going to be those are FDIC insured as well. And as we know, right, we're talking about long term investments, so we're accumulating a lot more money into those accounts. So we um, we want to make sure in those cases that we're 
um, we're um, diversifying as well, that we're, you know, moving that money around. In, in many cases, we may work different jobs. We may um, make changes to some of our, you know, to, we may open up different, have an IRA as well as uh, um, uh, an imp uh, uh, 401k. So we want to keep some diversity there um, so that that money can grow and grow safely. Um, so it's not, it, it is FDIC insured, but just remember you you do want to be careful of how much you have um, in that account as well. Absolutely. Thanks. That's great advice, Martin. So for our viewers, can you share some resources from AARP um, in addition to Money Map that can educate us on financial resilience? Yes, I'm happy to. So one um, first tool I'm going to mention is called Interview and Advisor. We have a, a, a phenomenal tool that we created, and it's to help educate and protect people around um, around finding the right financial professional. So, you know, these conversations, these are great conversations these are, and these are great starter conversations. But one of the things we know is that personal finance is very personal. We, we want to make sure that we're talking to someone who's looked at our financial story, who understands our full picture and can give us advice uh, specific to us. So um, we created an interview and advisor because we want to make sure that the that you're finding a professional who's not just looking to sell you something, who really is um, look, taking um, um, working in your best interest and is going to make sure that you're prepared financially uh, for your future. So take a look at that tool. It's one. It's a great resource um, that 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 you can use to um, to find a professional and just to make sure that you're vetting your financial professional in the right way. Um, so you, we have questions that you can ask. We have um, a checklist that you can go through just to make sure that you're doing your doing the proper research. And we're going to and you can even um, use some pre-crafted questions that we created to follow up and just learn more. Ask your advisor more questions if they didn't answer some things that you want to know. So it's a thorough tool, but it's a great way to find a financial professional. And, and it can be used by anyone. This is a free tool, free online tool. The other place I'd love for you to go is our Social Security Resource Center. AARP, our, our resources on Social Security are vast. And we, we have videos, articles. We have um, tools that you can use. We even have live Q&A where you can ask a, um, ask an expert from from who's who's a retired Social Security Administration um, expert. Who, who So, you know, you have any question um, with any nuance, we can answer it for you. So take advantage of that as well. Um, and then as we met, we mentioned money map, we also have one tool that's on the way it's called, this is pretirement.org. So this is a great tool that's going to help you, um, just kind of prepare for retirement. If you're, if, um, you're not there, or if you have family who's on the way, uh, you want to send them this tool because we know that you have to prepare for your last day of work every day that you're at work. So this is pretirement. Uh, dot org is coming soon. You, it'll be launched this summer, but um, be on the lookout for that one as well. Wow, that sounds uh, fantastic. I feel like I learn about new things that we offer um, to the public and our members every day. And so that's just fantastic. Um, so Martin, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you'd like to share as a takeaway for our viewers? You know, um, I, I'll say, so I'll, I'll reemphasize something that we, we did discuss. And it's, you know, one of the important things when we think about financial resilience, you know, it's the, it's important that we're, we have security around how we make our money. Then we need security around how we manage and grow our money. And, you know, just like what we saw in cases where, you know, these banks, um, in these bank failures, it was a lack of diversity. And then, you know, just, um, uh, yeah, it was a lack of diversity and and just, you know, not proper risk management. That's something that we all have to make sure that we're taking advantage of every day. Uh, we want to make sure that we're 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 preparing. We're prepared to protect our money as much as we are making it and, and saving it. Um, the protection part is very important. So the proper insurances, um, making sure that, you know, we're we're. Um, not being susceptible to any scams or any fraud. We want to make sure that we're prepared for that. These things are very important because we've we worked hard for what we make, right? We've worked very hard for it. So we have to protect it and we have to keep it. So keep that in mind. And if you have to talk to a financial professional, it's, you know, it's it's a it's an important part just getting that second opinion and having someone who's doing this every day to just look over, uh, look over and make look over your finances, hear your story and make sure that you're taking advantage of everything that you can. Um, you want that person on your side. It's going to be very, very important. Well said. Thank you, Martin. So if you have any questions, you can always add them to the Facebook comment section or send us an email at flaarp at aarp.org. This video will be available for you on our Facebook events page so you can always watch. And remember, you can find more information about this topic 
upcoming events, and much more online at aerp.org fl. Again, I want to thank our fantastic AERP expert, Martin Booker, for taking the time to join us and discuss financial wellness during Financial Literacy Month. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.